Elliot Williams, there's an incredibly weighty decision uh, facing the judge in this case. And if we think that this was an incendiary uh, moment in our politics, a jail sentence uh, for the former president and the current presumptive nominee, uh, Republican nominee, a week before he's supposed to be formally nominated at the convention uh, would be that much more incendiary. What's weighing on his mind at this Absolutely. point? Absolutely. And uh, I thank you for inviting me to Republican family Thanksgiving dinner <laughs> here. This has been quite enjoyable to be a fly on the wall for. Um, one of the things that uh, any judge will consider in deciding a sentence is, number one, the crime itself and what's the, the statutory maximum for the crime. That here it's four years in prison and I believe a $5,000 fine. Now, other factors are going to come in. The defendant's criminal history, the defendant's conduct during trial and after, wink, wink, um, the defendant's behavior, um, the defendant's uh the, the, you know, any violent circumstances of the crime, any, any number of factors are the circumstances of the case, the circumstances of the defendant, and then deciding what's best for the community there after that. I would just say from a political Very quick last word, just yeah. from a political standpoint, the pearl clutching amongst Republicans about the idea that he would go to jail from the people who were cheering Donald Trump's lock her up chant in 2016 is a little rich, I will say. <laughs> it's a little rich. All right, I think we need some Bloody Marys all around. And I just want to say something about the jury here. because. Yeah. There's a writer I really love, uh, Osito Onevo, and he, he, he's made this point before. He said, when you take a step back, the, the only people that have held Donald Trump truly accountable have been ordinary people. They didn't vote for him the first time around. They kicked him out of office the second time around. And in two different juries, random folks, literally off the street, more or less drawn from a machine that's popping out numbers and addresses. In, in a civil trial and in this trial, came together, reasoned with each other as equal citizens, and said, yeah, he did it. The whole time, we've been lectured about how, like, you don't understand Trump's appeal, and that it's, yeah. he, like, that he's the real, he's really the tribune of the folk of the people, and you elites and liberals, no, 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 no. People, real people, our fellow citizens, at every hinge point, important hinge point, have rejected the man, or in this case, found him plainly guilty of the thing that he plainly did. Why? Why oh, do you hell. think? I just have a lot of faith in people, and I think that <laughs> I, I, I mean, and again, I think that you know, I don't want to overstate the case. You know, bad people can be elected. It's not like some foolproof system, and juries can return wrong verdicts, and we've seen that. I don't want to like one of the things I think is tricky in our discussion of this is not to paint the majesty of the law right, into... Follow the moment out the window. Yeah, like, it's a complicated and often uh, remorseless system that we have constructed here in America of criminal justice. But would you say that's true for rich white people? No, with generally three, it is not. With, with, three, <laughs> with three experienced defense well, counsel? Th that's the other thing. You know, I said this on my show last night, and I really felt it and stood by today as we were preparing the jury, is to me the process was itself a monumental achievement. Whatever happened today, the process was an achievement. Everyone in that room, again, as equals, in this municipal building, with these career prosecutors, and this judge, and this jury of average citizens, testing the principle of equal justice under law. Can we just take this process that we use on other people all the time and apply it to this individual? And whatever happened today in that outcome of the jury, that process worked. So that's a two-pronged brutal surprise for Trump that one, he can actually be held accountable, and two, that no one's feeling sorry for him. Now, that might not be a surprise to you with regard to Trump, but this man's such an egomaniacal idiot that he really feels 99% of the world believes in him and loves him and trusts him, and that it's only a small cabal of liberal Democrat elites that are trying to take him down. And they're being unfair to him. But what that shows is that in every case Trump has ever been held accountable, it's been regular people. It's been regular folks like you sitting on juries or it's been regular folks like you at the friggin ballot boxes, whether it's Trump or Trump cronies, holding them accountable, tossing them all out in 18, tossing him out in 20, tossing out his cronies and in, in the Senate in 22, especially in the Senate, but keeping the House really close. And you're going to beat him again in 24. And Donald Trump crying, oh, everyone's so mean to me. Remember this, the brutal reminder. This is the man that for years chanted lock her up to Hillary when she wasn't even indicted on anything. Now that Trump's been indicted and convicted, 
Now it's time to start chanting, lock him up. 